So what episode number is this? Three? This will be, yes. This will be number three. Nice. I have tomorrow recording an episode with Celia, a comedian uh, who I think you've seen at The Actress. Yes. I think. Yeah. French, French, com- French Algerian comedian. Yes, she's great. Yes, she's, yes. Uh, she was the best one the whole night. Yes, yeah, she's tell, fucking, tell her I said that. I w- absolutely will. She's a... Uh, She's coming on next week because she's going to. She's just come back from the Edinburgh Fringe, but she's doing the Mad Cow Comedy Club thing that we do at the Red Lion. Right. Okay. Every week. She mentioned that when she was at the actress. Is like, this Thursday? Up, right, I'll this Thursday, and it's a charity event as well. Cool. I'll be there. So it's all good. Everybody, come down. I'd like to welcome my f- first guest, my only guest for this episode, Mr. Luke Webley, voice actor, three D modeler, musician, <laughs> one damn fine cook, and that's coming from somebody who actually does cook for a living. Thank you, Stu. Very happy Thank would you. happily eat any of the food I've seen on your Instagram. It all looks, uh, it's all hearty food, which it's, it's simple fare. Yeah, hearty, yeah, which is the only stuff that uh, I actually really like cooking nowadays. I did the whole uh, rosette Fancy roots business, and yeah, yeah. Michelin star, but well, your so, food looks great, man. You do great mm-hmm. food. It's it's finding. Uh, I, it's, I was found myself one day putting like smoked eel on a plate with microherbs with tweezers. Right. The portion size Life was like this big, and it's short. like seven pounds. Send that out. <laughs> oh no, I wouldn't be happy with that. I want yeah, yeah. microherbs. Yeah, microherbs. That there is. There's about seventeen million types of microherbs, and each of them cost more than the last. Right. Okay. But if you've ever watched like Gordon Ramsay, Marco Pierre, I ate Gordon Ramsay's mushroom. Ooh. Well, it's mushroom. One of his mushrooms. <laughs> what was it? Would you go to his restaurant or? No, is it a food show? You know, like they have the good food ah, show yes. every couple yeah. of years. It's a huge, very like NEC thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was just like there. It was like it must be about a decade ago now. And he's like, would anyone like to try the dish? And so I was like, I'm not going to pay for his restaurant. Yeah. So I may as well <laughs> yeah. Say, yeah. yeah. It tasted like a mushroom. It's just a mushroom. It's just a mushroom. <laughs> Was it uh, like a? Was it the? He had a bit of a scandal a few years ago because he was paid to endorse a certain type of mushroom, or a certain sprout or something. Bramley's apples. Bramley's it? apples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the one. And then he had people outside his restaurant holding up signs yeah. with trying to boycott because yeah, because what it was, <coughs> Bramley's paid mm-hmm. him like an extortionate amount of money to yeah. make uh, like like a dozen apple pies with Bramley apples. Yeah. And then he's used Granny Smith's, and he's on camera at this point. It was from a documentary called Boiling Point, which was his first appearance on TV ever. Oh, it was, oh what's that? So like back young, in the nineties? Yeah, he was, he was unhinged. Like he's a character now, but yeah. back then he was fucking. He was insane and the, scary. The raw Ramsey. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, uh, he's taking the, the apple pies. So this, this for the executives of Bramley, you see, for their like, you know, their like. Oh, shit, I didn't know that it was <laughs> meeting. Like and he took him in. He's got. He's done like fucking Granny Smith are way better than Bramley's. They can have Granny Smith and like he's put a little teaspoon of Bramley's puree in the center of each pie, just so technically. Yeah, it's, it's still Bramley's. technically. And like they're going like they're fucking eating the pie. Oh, delicious! Oh, Chef oh, Ramsay! Jesus. Oh, Chef Ramsay! Oh my god! And he's gone outside. He's laughing, like laughing at the camera, going, "The fucking mugs in there, <laughs> Bramley's mugs." Ah, oh, jeez. And then oh. they, they've seen the show. <laughs> <laughs> so they've seen the documentary come out and then and sued him. Fucking hey. Oh, see, that's see. But it would have been back then. He'd have been, you know, how like now he's kind of turned into the caricature. Well, he yeah, cartoon. He knows how the world sees him, so he kind yeah. of plays to that. Oh, plays to that but, crowd. Because this documentary as well, he was. It was when he was uh, going for his second Michelin star, I think. Mm-hmm. So the, the pressure was so on the him. Pressures on him. He so would be young. the youngest ever. Yeah. To, and he was. Oh, he it was three. It. Yeah, it's three Michelin stars. And Marco. Three, yeah, yeah so, Marco was the youngest. But like, yeah, he was fucking. Crazy in that documentary, Boiling mm-hmm. Point, it's called. Boiling Point, you can find right. it on YouTube. Yeah, I'll, I'll add it to my list. Sir. I wanted to talk about voice acting because if you've heard this voice now, you may recognise him as I've got, the list here is. You may <laughs> recognise him as Cole from the game Cracked. Yes. Heimdall, only in China. Only in China. And only in China. Laboratory from Dark Domains. Yep. And then I did write here schmoozing the colonisers, but for the Americans that will be watching, I do apologise. I don't actually think you're colonisers. <laughs> For uh, Picario building contractors, yeah, which yeah, I did, yeah. I listened to that. Whole, I watched that advert several times through, and it's like <laughs> that's fucking. It's classic. It's I'd buy words, one. I'd buy one. Picario. <laughs> I think that's it, right? Picario uh, building contractors from yeah, Jersey. Right. I think yeah, from Jersey. That played in like Jersey cinemas. Fucking hell! <laughs> okay, anybody who's watching this in Jersey. Hey Jersey, you're welcome. <laughs> Jersey. Bye, Picario. <laughs> Um, or is Jon Snow? 
Oh, which is a clip one. that like I that I've sent to several people and they go, really? Wait, which one is he? And I go, It's John Snow and they go, But that's not the same person you just sent me before. And it's like it is. Oh, okay. It's, yeah, okay. it's John Snow. It's well, I like to be try and be versatile. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But yeah, that John Snow impression gets like I say it's impression, it's kind of like a Well, it is an impression. But like uh most of voice acting has nothing to do with like mimicry or yeah, mimicry. Yeah. Because like people go, oh, voice acting, and they go, oh, listen to Michelle and Connery. I go, no, yeah. that's not, that's not what it's, it's about. Not, like, yeah, anybody. No one wants to hear. <laughs> if they want Sean Connery, they'll pay. They'll Sean just Google Connery Sean Connery. To, yeah, to. But like, oh, uh, yeah, it's, it'd be almost be like a temp music. Yeah. Like hiring a voice actor to, uh, was it they did it in Infinity War this year because Hugo Weaving didn't yeah, want to come got, back. Um, Ross um, Mark. Ross Mark. He's a great movie. Fucking. Fantastic. And what I liked yeah. about his work Very in memory. Infinity War mm-hmm. is he gets, uh, and some people might disagree with this, but someone that fucking pays attention to these things particularly. Mm-hmm. He's got Hugo Weaving, but he's also got Hugo Weaving doing German. Yes, I, I, yeah, I heard it as well. It's yeah, subtle and it's lovely mm-hmm. and it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can uh, even hear the V for Vendetta voice there. It's perfect yeah. weaving. It's it's uh, true, uh, like prowess in the art when you can yeah. do an impression of somebody who's. Doing an impression yeah. or doing an accent or it's something like, that's it's like a second, it's like an inception thing, a second layer to it. That's yeah, yeah. yeah it's incredible. He's great, Russ mm-hmm. but, Um I mean, there's exceptions. Like uh, I remember being very young, mm-hmm. and uh, the continuity in BBC Two between the programs. Yeah, like you get the announcer saying next on BBC Two, mm-hmm. and one of them was like, I know that voice. I've known it. And it just never occurred to me. Mm-hmm. It sounds like someone I've gone up, but it does sound like someone. It must yeah. have been about fucking seven or or something and I realised it was James Earl Jones but I thought well it's not can't be the James Earl not Jones not the James Earl saying, Jones you know, well, saying like yeah. play your cards right's coming on or whatever <laughs> but like uh, it was someone that sounded like him so there is there is a market for that kind of thing mm-hmm. oh um, so that would have been somebody it was the sounder like jeez yeah I'm looking forward to uh, James Earl Jones reprising his role as Mufasa, Mufasa yeah, yeah, yeah. high definition Mufasa. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking forward to that. We yeah, do. We will. Sense. We will have to watch him die in high definition. Correct. Um, I've only seen The Lion King once. Oh, it's a classic. I saw. Uh, see, I, 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 uh, I was on the cusp there. You see, if, mm-hmm. uh, you're probably like quite younger than me, aren't you? Well, you definitely are. But like, uh, I used to love Disney films. You know, saw Bambi. Uh, you know, yeah. You know anything? When I was very young. And then I started getting older, and I was a teenager, and there was like Disney films. Talking, <laughs> watch no Disney films. I got things to prove. I'm a man. I, don't watch I watched Disney Die Hard. And I watched Die Hard. <laughs> but then I went out with a much younger girl mm-hmm. years later, and then they re-released Lion King at the cinema. Yeah, and she's like, "Oh, Lion King." I'm like, oh, "I've never seen it." Before. Yeah, I'll buy the bullet. And I went to see it at the cinema. Mm-hmm. I was the only fucking geezer in there. Mm-hmm. That was, the, 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 new, have, the new Lion children. King, the no, 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 big CG. Like, no, no, the, the cartoon, like, oh, okay, re-released, Disney re released, mm-hmm. uh, like, the limited edition theater released. Ah, right, okay. And uh, I was the only man in there that wasn't with children, <laughs> yeah, well, apart from my girlfriend, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of age, of age, for the record, she was of age, <laughs> and uh, it was no, I really enjoyed it, it was great. Mm-hmm. I can see why it's got like a legendary status, but I've yeah. never seen it since then either. Ooh. But I'm, you know, I'm aware of all the cultural points of it, like yeah. you know, and uh, you know, Mufasa especially. Yeah, Mufasa. It's it's the voice that uh, this. Um, there's about five voices in Hollywood that, whether they're in uh, an animated film or an advert for something, that you just pick yeah. them up like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like James L. Jones, uh, Morgan Freeman. You recognise yeah, yeah, yeah. wherever Helen. Uh, no, not Helen Hunt. Oh, what's her name? She plays the mum in Incredibles. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. She was just in yeah, I mean, Batman Superman as well. I think it's Helen. Now you've said Helen Hunt. I can't think yeah, of Yeah, I keep thinking of Helen Hunt now, but <laughs> I know not it's Helen not Helen Hunt. Hunt. It's well, uh, whoever plays the mum. It's not Sally Field. It's, it's somewhere no. in between the two. <laughs> what the fuck is her name? Oh, that's going to get me. If we don't think about it, you'll... No. You'll John Malkovich, you know. You, you, yeah, you'll, uh, you'll pick up. Holly Hunter. Holly Hunter. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Helen... Holly Hunter... Yeah, yes, absolutely. As soon as you hear that voice, that's Ollie yeah, Hunter. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Christopher Walken's another one. Christopher Walken. Are you going to do your Christopher Walken? No, I'm not going to do my Christopher Walken. <laughs> it's, uh, it's. Um, I've since been practicing voices for doing things like this or accents. Yeah. yeah. And I'm starting to realise how much physicality goes into oh, yeah. making audio, and and it's that's that's part of the most fun about it is seeing how 
what you have to do to craft a voice for, oh, a, yeah, for something which is to like a well, I suppose the Italians are the most famous thing they yeah. talk their hands. Mm -hmm. so you, you That's know, a good point. Mode on! You know? <laughs> so, like, you know, yeah, you get your hands involved. And, uh, like, I, I dislocated my jaw not long ago. Oh, damn. Doing a pirate voice. Ah, so, okay. It's like, everyone does a pirate voice. Mm -hmm. Like, if you went, like, uh, I was doing a job for something, like, uh, some cryptocurrency thing mm -hmm. called, like, fucking Captain Crypto or something <laughs> like that. I think mm -hmm. that's what it was called. Yeah. And it was like they wanted this voice saying like, ah, yaha, welcome to the Captain Crypto show or something mm -hmm. like that. So thinking, well, everyone does a pirate voice. Let's really go for it. Let's get it as piratey as possible. Yeah. And I started doing this. Ah, <laughs> like I set my jaw like kind of weird back like that. And went clunk. And I went, oh, fuck. And, like it was like, oh, luck. shit. Oh. It was like that for like a month. Oh. I had to get the dentist to kind of pop oh, it back in. Oh, God. It's a, so it's a proper labor of love to... I commit. Yes. Man. That's... Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, I, I just, I, I mean, occupational hazards well, yeah. for sure. And the, f the f career it was, man, uh, is because like every job I had after that for the whole month, it was a click. Oh, and so I'd have geez. to sit there editing the clicks out afterwards because it was like, you know what I mean? Oh, I couldn't my send God. Off the, couldn't send off the recordings. <laughs> Bacar, give the clicking. Right? Yeah. Like, we didn't pay you for <laughs> clicking. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't need uh, no, metronomes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we just we just want the Picario. Yeah, man, I've suffered for my craft, man. Oh, jeez, yeah, same. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's certainly a labor of love when it comes to, um, it's because you don't you don't expect it to be as physical as it is. I was I was uh, doing a bit of research looking at uh, Mark Hamill doing yeah, the Joker yeah, yeah. voice, yeah, yeah. and it's fascinating to see. You got Kevin Conroy stood opposite him, yeah, yeah. just stoic, straight faced. I've been compared to Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. I love Kevin Conroy. It's the only Batman voice. It's the one. You know, if you read in Batman comics, yeah, yeah. it's I read it in his voice. Right, of course, it's yeah. it's ingrained now at this point. It's, it's fantastic. Can, yeah, I'd I'd uh, i put I'd put you on that uh, I'd put you on that <laughs> spectrum, <laughs> certain, Thanks, certainly, sir. sir. I'm going to mention the sponsor for today's episode, which is paid for by Russell Thompson. <clears throat> the Russell Thompson. The Russell Thompson. Right. Yes, humans have evolved the appendix a hundred thousand years ago to help us digest grass. Nowadays, we've got a bit more options for our diets. However, with the NHS being sold off faster than uh, child labour for celebrity clothing lines, it's time to, <laughs> time to fix it ourselves. Presenting the Rust Tea at Home Appendix Kit. Rust Tea? Um, which includes two aluminium scalpels, one pair of tongs, thread and needle, and 200 cc's of morphine. Go to rustyappendixkit.com. Use the promo code BOYISHMAN to get 35% off your first purchase. You get morphine with it? Yeah, 200 cc's. Two, you're, two you're scalpels. You're a drug dealer now. Thought we <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> Russell Thompson. It's uh, I like your idea. I shouldn't really say that. He's paying for the episode. One of you's um, a drug dealer, technically. It's one of you has to be. It's it's more the uh, the name. Oh, the, it's the, a great idea. The, though, the, the rusty crazy paranoid. The dude. rusty at home appendix kit. The rusty at Change home. the name, Russell. That's 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 perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're I crazy enough to, to cut yourself open at home you're not mm -hmm. going to care if it's rusty you get, pair, you get a pair of tongs thread and needle 200 cc's of morphine and two aluminium scalpels that's everything you need that's pretty cool man 35% off because I don't like how the NHS is going recently well you know because Britain's getting a bit as long as it bit, survives that's the most yeah I, that's all I'm hoping for yeah. as long as nothing goes into private private yeah yeah because uh, yeah. I'm getting taxed enough as it is yeah and man. I'm not happy with how the world's going. No, no, am I? With, with my taxes with being paid. So we're going into Brexit. It's like, you know, what they say, like, Biff got the almanac. That's what's Fucking happened. Fucking A. Whole shit. We're living in, we're living in that timeline. Where <laughs> Biff's, yeah, Trump Tower. Yeah, yeah. It's there in big letters. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. I've never actually made the comparison, but fucking A. Crack the uh, software into it. Make it just, uh... Prepare, prepare, Nick. On you're about to get jailbroke. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about Venom because we, we have yet to talk about it yet. Okay. Or films that you have seen recently. You are somebody who, out of everybody who I'm following on social media or sort of keep a tab on, yeah, one of the people whose opinion on films actually has value to it <laughs> as as an unbiased view of okay. art rather than. You're not like a Marvel versus DC guy, or no, no, or not at all, man. it's just whether the I'm film just a is film good. Guy. Yeah, whether the film is good, you let it stand on its own merits. Yeah, 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 yeah. How did you feel about Venom? I enjoyed Venom. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, 
I don't. I wouldn't say it was perfect because mm-hmm. if it was perfect, it'd be in the involved <clears throat> with Spider Man, of course. Yeah, it's a glaring. Yeah, commission, but for, for, it's a brave move to go without Spider Man, and I don't mm-hmm. think they did well enough with it. Yeah, Hardy was good. Some people criticise his accent. I don't think it was that bad. No, I it thought it was. Uh, it didn't I, take me out of the film or anything. No, I felt he chewed the scenery quite yeah, yeah, well. Just as, enough. Yeah, yeah, I thought. Yeah, uh, could have been clearer at the end with a uh, fight scene. Mm. Technically speaking, to feel really a lot it, of. It's uh, always going to be. It was, was going to be difficult to achieve. Because like either, anywhere you film it, it's just like blobs. Blobs going against and blobs. In the comic, it's it looks spectacular when it's all arcing up like mm-hmm. you know, yeah. ropes. Oh, it did have that long. Yeah, there was that stretched out shot. That was. Um, I was more impressed yeah. with that fight sequence of the of Hardy and Riz Ahmed fighting in the middle. That yeah, they yeah. were fighting, and then also the symbiotes over yeah, the top. Yeah, that's nice that stuff. felt more interesting than seeing. People with essentially the same powers yeah. go against each See, other. That was the most comic-like scene of the whole thing. Yeah, on purpose, though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, oh I felt I felt it was. Uh... Yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But the, mm-hmm. f- the film I enjoyed the most this year. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, we're almost at the end of the year now. Shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bad times at the El Royale. Bad times at the El Royale. I fantastic thought was film. F- absolutely fantastic. Superb film. One of those films that I felt. As soon as I was sat watching it, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I know, I know," it's like, and then, yeah. "Oh, no, wait, huh?" <laughs> and then, and then, ten minutes later, you're like, "Oh, okay, so now I know what's gonna." It was okay, cool. Of him. I thought everything about the film was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Every single character, Cynthia Erivo or Erivo, I'm not sure how you pronounce her name. She's yeah, incredible. Sure. Yeah. All the singing she did in the film is mm-hmm. completely live. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's crazy. Oh, shit. Yeah, you I like I mean? her. Uh, there's a uh, Isley Brothers, yeah, yeah, the Soul yeah. Heart of Mine. It's fucking. Just did it on set, man. Mm-hmm. No dubbing. Perfect. Yep. Incredible. Yep. And, you know, she does make some mistakes in it. They were instru- She was instructed to make those mistakes. Mm-hmm. Like the director's gone, can you fuck it up? And she's going, I don't think so. <laughs> I'll try. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, that, well, that would be the, one of the most difficult things about uh, having to do a job. If somebody, like, if somebody contracted you to, to do a voice role for something yep. and then said, okay, in the middle of this, you need to act like you're being stro- strangled in real life. And that, like, I need to hear that in the voice. Yeah. That's like you have to in- intentionally make it not perfect for it to be yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you do combat scenes a lot of the time, like for video games. Oh, yeah. So you have to do like the strangle, strangulation yeah. noises oh, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I never would have thought of that. Yeah, so you've got yeah, to... Yeah. Like, uh, and... yeah, yeah. Exertions, oh. they call them. Ah, oh, exertions. Yeah. God, so it's, it's, the, it's the technical <laughs> language of everything in between yeah. that's the one of the I've most fascinating things of about it. Um, like some days, uh, the job is just breathing. <laughs> you, know, you have to breathe for like twenty, well, twenty minutes a different way. So you like spend thirty seconds breathing like you're jogging, and then mm-hmm. you know breathing like you're uh, injured. Yeah, you should spend the day breathing, which is oh. that's a pretty good job. There, that's 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 that's. But on the other side of that, there's other days we have to spend the day pretending to be on fire. So you are screaming your throat out for hours. Ah, oh, that's a good point. And so very, it's the you know, trade-off. It's painful in the end. Mm-hmm. But like, uh, yeah, but like some days are great, some days not so great. Yeah, but I generally, see. it's all great. It, it's it seems it seems fascinating from the outside. Is that would you ever want to do a sort of Pixar or a, a role in like a Lion King, shall we say? Well, I'm doing a kind of uh, I'm playing a superhero in an animated thing, Ooh. and uh, in like a CG animation mm-hmm. thing. And he's an old. I can't really. When does this go out? Because I'm not sure. Um, if I can say this. Will be tomorrow, so <laughs> we can. Well, I can keep it vague. Yeah. Okay. I won't say what it's called or anything. Mm-hmm. You can update it when it comes yeah. out, I suppose. Yeah. But I, in fact, I'll show you. I've got a picture. I can show. Mm. I can show you. And then if yes, you, yes. We can do you, a follow you don't, up. You don't get to. You don't get to watch this. We this is an exclusive for the host. Uh, let me find it. Yeah. Probably can tell you just find out. Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, the next section is uh, plugs, social media, where people can get in touch with you, find your material. Okay. Well, when... On Instagram, that's where I'm most active. Mm-hmm. La Webley. Uh, Instagram is Lucas Luke Webley, I think. I'll double check that. Mm-hmm. And I know you're on Twitter as well, aren't you? I am on Luke Webley on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I should have found these things beforehand. Uh, <coughs> just skip past all the mm-hmm. thousands of nudes the girls send me. Everybody sliding into your DMs. <laughs> Wow, that's excellent. <laughs> his name is Frank. And that's his nephew's, nephew's birthday, right? Oh, that's brilliant. 
Whoa. Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> he's like an old, mm -hmm. old, old superhero, and uh, his power is making people laugh. <laughs> which I have in my normal yes, life. Yes, you're uh, one charming <laughs> sir. So is um how many of the notes they give you beforehand they like give you a backstory for the character to yeah, get yeah, to a voice that, like, or it's very thorough because mm -hmm. like uh because it's CG they spend so much time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh like these days most of the times for that kind of thing they'll do uh motion capture or facial motion mm -hmm. capture. But like that for that one this is one of the ones where you have to like just sync it to the video you get the video file yeah. like the raw it's not rendered or anything it's just animatics kind of mm -hmm. thing and then you're like voicing to the beats and then it, you set it off and they go oh you was breathing a little too intensely in that middle part and you go, mm -hmm. Fuck, it's that exact it has <sighs> to match like jeez yeah i never uh, i never thought about whether they do animation first and then lay the sound over yeah. afterwards or match well, the animation to the sound afterwards mm -hmm. but like in some cases like this one it's the worst the worst situation. <laughs> yeah, where you just get like flashes of a storyboard yeah, flashing yeah. past. Or like um like the raw renders. It's like it's in full motion but it's just very doesn't look very polished at all. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like loads of little micro noises. Yeah. You know, you're like uh ah, ooh, mm. that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like raising an eyebrow, but it needs an audio cue just to Shit, yeah. Because it's gotta be really expressive. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Jeez, that's it's it's I guess you don't um playing games or watching animated films you don't notice uh, i only really notice it in uh like anime or something where like as they're turning their head or something you'll hear like a yeah, yeah. or something because yeah, yeah. they're kind of really big on all of yeah, that yeah, and it's like bold yeah backgrounds yeah, yeah. flying past and like, um, games I'm, I'm doing this uh if you want to know about projects mm -hmm. yes upcoming uh, shows I'm projects doing a game called uh ready or not by mm -hmm. a company called Void Interactive. Mm -hmm. That's that's the most. That's one of the most excited about right yeah. now. And uh, it's glorious <laughs> as anything. Yeah. And it's kind of in the veins of uh, like uh, Rainbow Six kind of. Do you remember SWAT the game? Yes, I've got SWAT. Yeah. It's like it's a successor to SWAT. Oh, that's pretty like sweet. Modern day SWAT yeah. game. Yeah. I got SWAT three and SWAT four. Classics, yeah. man. Well, th well mm -hmm. you'll love Ready or Not. Okay. I will. I don't, uh, don't know exactly why it's called Ready or Not. Mm -hmm. but like, uh, look that up. Uh, okay. Look that up, viewers. I, I'm in that. Ready or Not coming from I'm, Void I'm Interactive? Void Interactive. Okay. I will add it to my wish list and I will. There's like an alternate reality game going on about it now. Mm -hmm. I'm stumped. They don't give me the answers or anything. <laughs> yeah. I haven't asked, but I don't think they would. Mm -hmm. But like, there's a gameplay trailer coming out for that. Uh, I don't know exactly when. Mm -hmm. Hopefully before the year's out. But it's an eight minute gameplay trailer. Ooh. And I play three characters in the trailer that you won't be able to tell are the same mm -hmm. person voicing them. Well, that's, that's what's it's been so much fun about doing the research on you is that every single voice that I found of you is I could lay them next to each other and you would never guess that. Yeah, it's versatility. It's a, test, that's, a testament that's to your versatility, Thanks, sir. Man. And uh, well, to, in the trailer, what you can expect to see. Again, mm -hmm. I shouldn't really be saying this, but I'm not giving anything too specific away. Mm -hmm. I play a, a biker. Yeah. Racist biker, really racist. <laughs> yeah, and he's just got a kind of country, kind of uh, biker, Johnny Axel Ramon. <laughs> uh, you want to mix blood with these? For I can't think of any of this. <laughs> yeah, and then there's uh, a Russian mobster. He's got a very um, kind of mild voice. I can't mm -hmm. think how it goes now, but that's completely different from Johnny Ramon. Yeah, but like you probably end up with these two people in the same scene. It'd be me. Having a conversation uh, with myself. Yeah. And people would be like, oh, I like that one. Oh, I don't like that one. <laughs> they won't know it's... The same. And, but uh, most excitingly, I think I might have the most lines in the entire game because I play the, the TOC, the uh, operations center, tactical mm -hmm. operations center. So I'm the guy on the radio. Ah, I'm the one so saying, green light, fucking we have eyes on target. Holy shit. Well, Extract I'm... the child. I say things like that, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, you know... In an American yeah. kind of voice, mm -hmm. American SWAT guy voice, that yeah, yeah. copy. Yeah, exactly. Kind of, yeah. yeah, exactly. That's, that. uh, that's fucking brilliant, man. So that's... I'm not the lead character, but I got mm -hmm. more lines than the lead yeah. character. <laughs> what, what's been what was what was more fun to play the the Russian or because there's certainly there's got to be more uh, when you know you get to play like a Russian or yeah. like a southern fucking racist, the southern like, racist, like, was almost fun. like trucker sounding guy. Yeah, yeah. The southern racist got to be a lot of fun like... to get into. 
I'm not going to say the racism came naturally, but the voice, <laughs> came, the, the, the southern <laughs> voice comes naturally because mm-hmm. um, I've just done a book uh, where I played uh, a Texan. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like a Texan ex sniper with PTSD. Holy shit, so that's uh, layered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, like you have to do all the nightmare sequences because yeah. you know, he wakes up with the explosions. Like, oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I won't do the voice now. Buy the book. <laughs> and. Uh, but like uh, it's a full book so you have to do like a Texan voice for eight hours so you have to know it kind of well so yeah. by the end of the book uh, or it could have been Texan yeah and like the, the authors from like down that way somewhere mm-hmm. and she's like that's perfect you know she Jesus. wouldn't that's possibly tell that you were English the, that's the best stamp that you could get yeah, from yeah, yeah. the author who's as authentic oh, yeah, it's as like she put the characters together so yeah. she should know you know what I mean yeah, oh, that's that's fucking class man and uh I'm hoping that'll be up for an award next year because I was supposed to do uh, a book that she did. The book that she did, she did before that I was supposed to do that one. Mm-hmm. And uh, for this book that I did, I did it with an actress called Tara Langella. Yeah. Who is the niece of Frank Langella, who played Skeletor in Masters of the Universe, mm-hmm. the movie. Yep. And, and Nixon. He's Nixon in yep. Fast Nixon. Yep. So he's Academy Award nominated. Yes. That's right. But like his niece, anyways, and uh, so we've done half the book each. She's done the female characters, mm-hmm. and the main female character, and I did the main male character, and he's then like the other male characters. But the book before that was going to be the same arrangement, but in the end, they hadn't heard enough of me mm-hmm. to make the decision, and they just went with Tara Langella, and then Tara Langella two weeks ago at the Warner's Brothers lot mm-hmm. in Burbank, California, picked up an award for that book. And I was going to be that's, on there. That's that's a rip. That is. But I've, you know, I've got. I'm confident that this one mm-hmm. recognised because it's pretty. You know, it's a good book. It's a good performance. Yes. And a good book. <laughs> I'll I take your word for it, sir. Because okay. Texas is, it's hard enough uh, trying to. You know, you get like American, uh, British actors who do American accents, yeah, and some some can do them great. Mm-hmm. Some some of them some, can't some are regional where you can certainly hear yeah, like. Yeah certainly more Boston or New York or something. And you get, uh, I do feel, I'm trying to think of uh, Andrew Garfield. Brilliant actor. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Do feel every single one of his American accents is just sort of regional, uh, sort of just classic general. American, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas, you know, like the new Spider-Man, Tom Holland. Yeah. See, Garfield, uh, he's New York in, as Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. It's it's a bit too. Hey, oh, I'm walking here. It's like, oh yeah, you know, Tony oh Dan, yeah, that's Tony a good Dan, point actually. Like, yeah. You see, like um, Holland's mm-hmm. is perfect. Yeah, it's like even the way he says, like uh, I can't think of any examples, <laughs> but just the way he inflects some of his vowels. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a like the way he says the the letter O. A lot, of, a lot of people in the New York accent or English people trying to do a New York accent say the O wrong. Mm-hmm. And he gets he nails it. I can't think of any specific examples. Which yeah. is bad. But Tony, like, as, as someone, yeah, it's like um, I can't even explain it, but like he does it well. Take mm-hmm. my word. For yeah, it. he has the uh, idiosyncrasies of yeah, a proper yeah. New Yorker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What was it? He, uh, I read Without that he, going over, but he's not a cartoon. Yeah, man. he's not. It's, that's I. You know what? I never really thought about the Garfield thing until you just pointed it's out. But he much. is very. The it's first time when he takes down that thug, and he doesn't really act like Spider Man. He acts like a bit of an ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he webs him against the wall. Yeah, he's a bit yeah, of a bit of a not prop, my web slinger. Prop of a fucking douchebag. Yeah, you know, that, that, that's, it's, 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 it's exactly what it's like. It's, it's caricaturish. Yeah, yeah, and not it doesn't feel and natural. Holland is not like that at all. No, yeah, Holland and, is. Uh, but like his American accent in uh, the Social Network, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's just a general accent, but mm-hmm. it's, it's it's good. It's, it's yeah, very it good. Never took me out of. I didn't know his English. I don't think no, I saw that. I was it. I watched the other day. Was uh, Darkest Hour again? Uh, the Star. the Gary Oldman Winston Churchill film. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. It's there's only really uh, really when he raises his voice and gets to that Oldman level. Yeah, yeah. When he's like everyone, when it when it breaks, <laughs> it's like oh, there's Oldman. Other than that, pitch. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I can't really say I've heard much actual Winston Churchill. Well, we've, heard, than, we've all heard the speech. Yeah, it's all yeah. the we will never surrender. Yeah. Those jowls yeah. that feel like wobbling, which <laughs> always uh, seem to. The cheeks feel more jowly whenever I feel like Nixon. So you yeah. got that. Yeah, you gotta we're gonna crush them. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's 
just watching too many movies. That's all it is. <laughs> Come to the segment now called You Don't Say. It's just quick fire questions. You answer okay. as honestly as you want to. Okay. Do you believe in the afterlife? No. Mm, okay. You're the first person who's ever said no for this. There's nothing. It's the same as before you're born. It's just yeah. you, it's nothing to be feared because there's nothing there to mm -hmm. be feared. I think I'm uh, a bit more hopeful. I, I just hope there's something more, but logic and science just says it's... Well, the thing is, the good thing is, you'll never know. Yeah. And if, there, if there is, then you will know. But if yeah. there's not, then you won't know. And if there's not, then I won't care. Cause yeah, you, you, won't be, you won't exist to be disappointed. That's a fair point. <laughs> Do you tip when eating out? Yeah, yeah. Very I tip good. cab drivers, uh, uh, wait staff, bartenders. Mm -hmm. You know... Uh, we chefs. work behind bars. The chefs, mm -hmm. are like uh, I tip anyone like that because like I've been there. It's yeah, helps you, you out. You know, you know how yeah. hard it is and how, uh, how fucking horrible people can be. I always tip the Uber drivers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, taxis always. Yeah, I always, always do that as well because they don't have to. They don't. They can pick somebody else up. Yeah, yeah. pick me up. And I give to the homeless. I'm not one of these people that doesn't yeah, give to the homeless. I but what I well. don't do is give the same homeless person money every time I see him because I'm like. That's Jesus point, Christ, yeah. I need yeah. money as well. <laughs> yeah, what and, at, and at what a certain point, I personally have given you about £20 in change. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the one, well, um, you know, you, what about the other people that uh, only see once? But it's I do give, as a, as a rule. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that all the beggars are like uh, organised, uh, you know, scam artists. Mm -hmm. cause, like, who would do that, you know? Yeah. Well, you, know, you need dignity in life. Uh, there's a, there's Although, can I say this? Mm-hmm. I was, uh, I live near Five Ways. Yeah. And there's like usually a few beggars in the subway there. Oh, and I was yeah. walking through towards the supermarket. And the one guy's on a phone. He goes, yeah, I'm still at work. I'll be back in a couple of hours. And he's like in the subway begging. So he's like, that's his work. That and he's back. He's going back home afterwards. So I'm saying, <sighs> which is like, there's, there's a few out there, scam artists uh, out there. Yeah, it feels, there's certainly a juxtaposition of, of, of people who you see constantly in the same spots yeah. giving the same excuses and, and it's like I can said, only do I'm, gonna, I'm gonna work for a couple more hours and then we're gonna head home it's like fuck man jeez but then again you see like another person down the canal openly weeping in the middle of the night yeah so you know I'm not gonna paint everybody with a yeah. brush. but I do tip and I do give when I can mm -hmm. when it's needed and when it's when it's warranted yes when it's warranted is uh, I feel uh, the talk they have at the start of Reservoir Dogs and Steve Buscemi's yeah. like <laughs> That's that, that's kind yeah, yeah. of how I feel about the whole thing. <coughs> Your favorite cocktail? Oh, uh, not exactly a connoisseur, but uh, I, do, I do like a daiquiri. Oh, a daiquiri, a strawberry a good daiquiri. Yes, very good. Yeah, man. Refreshing. Uh, who never fails to make you laugh? Uh, ooh, my twin brother. Mm -hmm. Because we shout have, out like, to Jim. Hey, yeah, Jim. <laughs> how you doing, man? We got like just intertwined humor it's mm -hmm. just impossible yeah you know what i mean so like uh, it's not that like we make each other laugh all the time but like just the most ridiculous and like obscure embarrassingly stupid <laughs> bullshit <laughs> that i find funny i know he will get yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm. things you'd be like if you if you heard us talking you go what the fuck are you <laughs> idiots talking about it'd make you angry <laughs> that's stupid we talk to each other but, no, no. That's the thing. What's the current trend that you loathe? Uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> um, when are you happiest? Ooh, when am I happiest? Oh, that's tricky. Uh, I'll say uh, when I'm creating. Mm-hmm. When I'm creating, because I'm very creative, just generally. Yeah. I mean, I'm a voice actor by profession, but I do all sorts of other stuff. You're a too. Very good musician, yeah, yeah. and I've oh, seen thanks, you live man. very thanks, several man. times. A 3 D yeah. modeler as well. Yeah, that's that's is, uh, really rewarding. Yeah, that makes me super happy. Mm -hmm. And sculpting as well. I've yeah. recently taken up sculpting, and I've got a kind of knack for it. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, I could sort of just came to see the dimensions. I don't know if mm -hmm. that's because of my poly modeling background, but mm -hmm. it just it seems second nature to me. And just sketching and things, just just making anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's when I'm at my happiest. That's, that's probably the. That's definitely the best answer we've had on this. Who's your childhood hero? Uh, ooh, I don't know if I've got any in real life apart from like my mom. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, 
mean, it, it, I'd have to say like uh, Spider-Man and by extension Stanley. I know he's just yeah. died and it mm-hmm. genuinely upset me. I was, you know, crying. Yeah. Like fucking baby. Because like Stanley's voice, again, this all goes back, maybe it's responsible in some way for me using my voice now. But like uh, The Amazing Spider-Man or Spider-Man is Amazing Friends mm-hmm. as a kid. Spider-Man is Amazing Friends, yes. You hear Stan Lee on that every episode. Mm-hmm. And he'd say, welcome true believers yeah. in the Stan Lee voice. I'm not going to insult the man by doing it now. <laughs> but like he was like, that voice is just like, who is that man? Yeah. And he's at the end, he's like, this is Stan Lee. And like, <laughs> it's like Stan Lee, because you know, there was a kid, it's like, oh, his name's Stan Lee. But I like the way he says the name Stan Lee. Stan Lee. Stan Lee. And then, of course, you realize it's Stan Lee. Mm-hmm. But that voice is always just... Being there, like, just the... And because I used to read the comics, mm-hmm. and he'd have the soapbox, and he'd be always, like, have kind words for everybody. Yeah. I, was, I loved Stanley. And I always have, and I always will. So uh, I was gutted when he died. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't say he was a childhood hero, but he definitely sticks out from my mind mm-hmm. right, from my, uh, younger days. And, and Spider-Man, of course. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. But my mom. Yeah, no childhood heroes, really. Who's your dream collaborator? Alive or dead, you could have. Ooh, fuck. Mm. See, I, that's hard because I prefer to like do things on my own. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I've, like I've been in bands, but I've always written the songs that I've performed because yeah. it just irks me to, for it or embarrasses me. I, like, I have to have a complete product before I can even show anyone anything, mm-hmm. really. I, uh, I, can't, I, feel, I, can't, I can't show someone something half done and say, what do you think? It has yeah. to be perfect to post, and then I have to say, what do you think of this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't think... I, I don't, I, I'm not a collaborator, collaborator, really. Absolutely, no. Absolutely what you mean there. Who's taught you the most? Oh, uh... In my... In my days now, as far as what I know uh, with creating things and my job, me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's, that's how it should be. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how it should like be. The guitar to all myself. Yeah. You know, you know, you read them little chord books and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, me. God damn, that's 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 you're giving the best answers for these. Uh, you, you're going to be the one that I compare people's answers to. <laughs> What's your worst habit? Oh. Since recently giving up smoking. No, don't do anything. Yeah, can't can't have anymore. that anymore. Don't do anything bad anymore, really. Uh, breaking plans. <laughs> Breaking plans. Terrible for breaking plans. That's that's. Uh, I think we've had. This that, is the that will be fair. That will be fair. That will be a, a <laughs> rescheduled show. That's fine. I know it doesn't sound, sound like much, but mm-hmm. sometimes I've really inconvenienced people, and it's really mm-hmm. bad. Childhood celebrity crush. Oh, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer in the uh, cat suit. <sighs> Top yeah, notch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's one thing people don't know about you? Fuck. I don't know, I'm pretty open book, really. Mm-hmm. Is there an Ill- illegitimate child in uh, Thailand or no, something? No, there isn't. Uh, I mean, there's some things I could say, but I don't want to say you, there's, so, there's some things that are purposely, yeah. but the public don't know yeah, about. There's things, that yeah. pe- there's things that people don't know about me mm-hmm. that I can't reveal. That's very fair, then. <laughs> we'll, uh, you complete the fifth. That's cool. Uh, lights on or lights off? On. Very good, sir. Uh, where can people find you live next? Um, tomorrow night at the Actress and Bishop. Ah, very well. Or well, if this goes out tomorrow, tonight at the Actress yes, and Bishop. It will be tonight, yes. And we'll every other Wednesday, so whatever Wednesday this is. Not the next one, but the next one. Mm-hmm. And I uh, I play like, I play a set early in the evening about half eight. Mm-hmm. And then I have guests on. And then I go back on at about uh, 10 and play for an hour till 11. That's very good. Well, thank you for coming in today, no, sir. I've you, had Stephen. an absolutely brilliant time. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Well. Thank you. See you guys soon. Thank See you to you my guest, Luke Webley. Buy those crazy uh, scalpel kits. <laughs> See you soon, Russell Thompson, in court. <laughs>